Hi everyone, so this is the first video, and hopefully the only video for this specific lesson. It's all about solving. Um, and it kind of goes back to all the trick stuff we did before. So I'll just put it on full screen now, just for now. So I want to solve cosecant for 2.5. It's important, just check, I want to be in degrees when I put it in my calculator. Cosecant is 1 over sine. So what I'm looking at, then, is that 1 over sine x is 2.5. If I flip it, so sine x is 1 over 2.5, then that gives me that sine x is 0 0.4. To be fair, you could go straight from the question to, to this line here if you wanted to. Now, I'm using my calculator. Uh, and it's just going back to how I solved straight away. So I do a lot of my calculator. We'll do it properly, eh? It's a good reminder for us. There. Right, so I need to be in degrees, because this question's in degrees. And if you remember, you do go from the menu one. That's be in degrees. Shift menu. Go down to degrees. There. Do exit. I'm sure why that's moved up, oh, but I can't move it back in. There we go. There. Right, hang on. So I want the principal value, which is the inverse sine of 0.4. It's over here. So shift sine 0.4. There. So that gives me an x value. 23.6 degrees. There. If I go into menu of 5 for graph, let's uh, go that. So I want to solve uh, after sine x and 0.4. Just to change the axes a little bit. So I'm doing, so the range is 0 to 360, so 0, 360. I'm in degrees, so I'm going to go up in 90s. And sine goes between plus or minus 1, so I'm going to do minus 1.1 to 1.9. There, so I've got that picture. It's always good to draw the picture you've got. So I've got two values, and if I solve it, I must have a third graph on. Hang on. Intersect, that's better. So I get the 23.6, and I get the 156.4. So if I'm doing 3 sig fig, I would have x is 23.6, and I'd have 1. 56 degrees to 3 sig fig. You could actually graph cosecant at 2.5, but other math schemes tend to do it this way. So I'm going to look at the next one, example 2. So I've got a cot 2x. So let's have a look then. So cot is 1 over tan. So 1 over tan 2x is minus 3. Flip it. So it's tan 2x is minus a third. I'm doing 0 to 360. Now I'm going to graph tan 2x and I'm going to graph the third, the minus a third that goes with it. So I'm not going to faff about because we kind of expected more just to do what we see. So I'm going to do oops, tan of 2x and I'm going to do minus a third. So minus one over three. There. So it gives me a picture that I want to kind of get the value from. Uh, now what I haven't done is the menu one bit, so I'm going to go back to that in a minute. So as long as you've got a picture, it's got two graphs in the same area, so that's one to there. As long as you've got something that looks the same, you can't really go wrong, can you? There. 
and it gives me values if I do G solve an intercept of 80.8, and 350.8. Now one bit I kind of missed off there, what I should really have done first, was to work out what the inverse tan was. So if I go into menu one, and I do shift tan of minus a third, it gives me minus 18.4. And I didn't really want that one, because that one's outside of the range because it's a minus, because my range of values is 0 to 360. So I don't really want this one. There. But I've got my calculator. The good thing is I have my calculator sorted. Right, so let's have a look at this one then, example three. So example three is secant x equals four cos x. All right, okay. So secant is one over cos. So if I take the cos x up, I've got 1 is 4 cos squared x. If I take the 4 down, I've got a quarter is cos squared x. Now I don't want the cos squared, I need to square root it. If you square root a quarter, you get plus or minus a half. So cos x is plus or minus 1 over 2. So I've got a set of values for cos x is minus a half, and I've got a set of values for cos x is plus a half. And if I do menu one, I've got to be careful with this one as well, because I'm in radians now. So if I switch to radians on menu one, that will give me, oh, what will it give me then? Let's have a look on the calculator. Oops. Oh, hang on. <laughs> got to move that to get to that and that. Then move that down. So if I do, so it's been radians, so shift, menu, grab. So I'm doing inverse cos of minus a half, minus 0.5. So that gives me two thirds pi, that one. There. And then uh, if I do inverse cos of plus a half, there we go, delete, it gives me a third pi. Now if I graph it, I'm looking between, if you look, I'm looking between minus pi and pi. So if I do menu and five, now this is where it can kind of come a little bit unstuck for us. So I'm looking at cos x. So cos x. And I'm looking at minus 0.5. And I want a line in. Should be in radians. Eh? Yeah. Hang on, I just need to change my axes then. So I was looking from minus pi to pi, so minus shift pi to pi, and I'll do that in pi by 4. I'll see what we've got now in terms of the picture. There we are. So if you look, them are the only values that are have on the minus a half. So the minus a half, if you look, will give us the two thirds pi, but it also gives us the minus two thirds pi. So x is two pi over three and minus two pi over three. So that's for the minus, it's because of the symmetry. 
So you're going to 